Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. Well, today is the third Tuesday of the month, which means it's time for vinegar and spice and everything nice with California Balsamic's Tommy Allen, Tommy Balsamic, and local spiceries Nick DeVoren. They're going to be making some incredible SOS-free and vegan recipes like a chickpea tikka masala and a black bean pumpkin soup. Please welcome them to the show. We're going to start with you, Thomas. How are you? Hi, Chef. Everybody's happy to be back on the show. I'm sorry we missed last month. We were just too busy with the harvest festivals, the, the festivals that we're doing on the weekends. And uh, and I want to say thank you for coming out to the Harvest Festival this past weekend. It was wonderful seeing you in Sacramento. We had at least two dozen Chef AJ uh, people coming out to the Harvest Festival. But as you know, like we were just saying before the broadcast began, it was raining inside our booth at the Harvest Festival this past weekend, which is always a problem if it's raining in there. But, you know, I mean, we just kind of deal with it. Last year, they had no heat. What is with that place? You know? <laughs> no heat last year. Rain inside our booth this year. Oh, Jeremy, that's just always a, always a bit of a drama. Uh, but it's it's wonderful to be able to go to the harvest festivals because we get so many plant based people who saying, "I wanted to try all of your flavors," and they were able to do that. So that's it's wonderful to have that opportunity. I know that is so much fun when you get to taste them. You know. Yep. So anyway, uh, we're going to introduce our exciting helper today, the world famous Miss Bryn Lehman. Say hello to everybody out there. Hello, everybody. Hello. Good. Hi. That's, yes, indeed. And Brinley, of course, I uh, forget when your birthday is. I say it nice and loud. December 15th. December 15th. Everybody knows December 15th wow. is the most important day of the year. Well, that is the 100th birthday of Dr. John Scharfenberg, who will be on the show that day. No, that is exciting. Uh, you can so you're sharing a birthday with another doctor who's going to be on Chef AJ's show on your birthday. Hi. How exciting is that? So and lucky. he's gonna be a hundred. He'll be our he'll be our first well, no, not our first hundred year old, but first person to right. on the show. Nice, nice, nice. So um so Chef, I uh, I have a question about uh we have one of our recipes here that we had we cooked up just a little while ago and we actually ate it for lunch. We had to keep a little bit of it, and it has uh tempeh. I wanted to know the difference between tempeh and tofu. Give me a quick education. Oh, well, education. Tofu, they're both made from soy, and they're both pretty much minimally processed, but tempeh is fermented. That's the main difference. Okay, and tofu obviously is not then. Correct. Okay, good enough, because we, we made the dish. It was delicious, and we had more than half of it for lunch today. We had to save a little bit for the broadcast. So, That's um, funny. Some, so all is good out here. Otherwise, um, I let's see, other new things that have been happening over the last couple months, uh, not a whole lot besides just uh, just being busy at, at, uh, at the warehouse for November, as we're always busy, getting ready for December. If anybody needs Christmas gifts for the holiday, please be aware that they need to be in our facility by December uh, about the 10th to 13th in that range because they have to be in the post office system uh, on their way by the 15th. And if they're in the system by the 15th, then they'll arrive wherever they need to be. Um, so that's always the post office always giving us hard dates on when things have to be there. And that way they're guaranteed to be there. Some priority boxes can be a little bit later as long as they're going mostly to the West Coast. But we know people uh, want to get gifts on time. And that's uh, so the 15th is always. A, a, yeah. So that's good. All right. Because yeah, somebody anyway, let's certificate, Thomas, in case they ordered late. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Now, we do offer gift certificates. We've had them for several years. Uh, it has just a, a nice, colorful certificate that says um, it has a, a line that talks about, you know, Merry Christmas, Mom and Dad, we love you. So you get a one line sentence on there, the value of the certificate. And then the bottom says to Mom and Dad from all your kids. 
something like that. So that's what the certificate looks like. We can mail it, we can e or email it to you so you can put it in a card yourself or we can email it or mail it to the person. Um, and we always like to, shipping as you know, is always a flat rate of 995. So we like to uh, add the 99. So if somebody were getting a certificate for say $50, we would charge fifty nine ninety five, and then the certificate would say fifty dollars. But then we would say to them, uh, shipping is included. So that's always nice that they would get to use the entire fifty dollars and not have to use some of it for the shipping. Nice, and that's what's great about seeing you at these festivals. There's no shipping. That's true, and all the little goodies when you get to try everything. Plus, we get suggestions from people who you know say, "Can you do this flavor?" and uh, you know, so we're always getting suggestions from people uh, hoping that we can do something. But of course, are the ingredients available? You know, being in downtown Ukiah, there's not a lot of stores there that can have some exotic ingredients. So yeah. that's always the challenge. Did you get any first time customers at the Harvest Festival? Oh, we always get several because there's generally anywhere from eight to 10,000 people. Since COVID, it's been a bit of a challenge. There's not as many vendors. Many vendors either went out of business or retired. Uh, and then the number of people haven't been uh, as many uh, years pre-COVID. There was be maybe 13,000 people come over a weekend. Now there's about eight to 10,000. So there's just not as quite as many vendors and people as there were uh, pre-COVID. But for us, it's an event that we've done for 20 years and we have repeat people coming back year after year after year. Uh, so that's, it's wonderful seeing people again. And we'll be in Pomona this weekend, the first weekend in December of 2023. And we will uh, have dozens and dozens of people every day saying that they've been buying from us for years and years. So it's yeah. uh, it really makes us feel good to have products that the general public likes and the plant-based community love. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you get warm fuzzies every time we do a show. Do you find that the in-person buyers have the same taste as the online buyers in terms of what the most popular flavors are? Um. <laughs> Some of them, yes, but not all of them. Um, the the general public still uses a little bit of oil and vinegar, um, and uh, but some of our tried and true flavors like sweet heat always in our top two. Uh, the Gilroy garlic, the teriyaki, the new ruby red onion and cucumber. The general public loves them. The plant based community love them. So that's the real difference. But just there's a handful of oil and vinegars that we've done for 25 years that uh, people, you know, will always like those as well as the general public likes the uh, likes oil and vinegar. Nice. Well, it's really great. I think are you you were the first person, at least the first person I was aware of to do those uh, three ounce bottles that get through TSA with the little squirt tops. We did those because at least for five years at the Bay Area street festivals, we would go and we would have our glass five ounce, eight ounce and 12 ounce bottles. And tourists with carry on luggage would say, we can't buy anything from you and take it home with us. It won't go through a TSA. And so we started looking for the three ounce bottles uh, probably, you know, about seven or eight years ago. And now we go through anywhere between 35 and 40,000 a year of, of those little three ounce bottles. Most of them sold uh, online, but we, we also will take several hundred to the festivals. We're just not doing as many festivals as we used to. Pre-COVID, we would do 75 or 80 a year. Now we're doing 10. So that's a big difference. And we're trying to you know, not go to near as many because it's just uh, it's too much work and we're getting too old for the 66 and, and doing festivals every weekend is uh, is too difficult a lifestyle now. So now we're cutting dramatically back and, and the plant-based uh, people on our website have overtaken, uh, you know, uh, our, our website and we'll be focusing on plant-based for years to come. 
That's great. Well, you know what I love about the three ounce bottles, and I think a lot of people have copied you since you started doing them, is I drive to my improv class on the weekends and it starts at 12 and we're not allowed to eat. So I either got to eat before 12 or I got to eat like after three. And so I'm eating my lunch in the car, which is, you know, always like a handy yam or a roasted handy yam, air fried, something like that. And it gets too messy. And so what I do is I take a bite and then I take a squirt. I take a bite and then I take a squirt. <laughs> yeah, that is the, one of the greatest uh, visuals that I can ever imagine. Just seeing you in a car taking a bite of a handy yam and then just a little quick squirt of balsamic on all that. Is that the curry balsamic that you're doing? Um, actually, last time it was Gilroy garlic, believe it or not. I sometimes mix are. it up. Yeah. Yeah. I have to say, when you told me that curry balsamic was killer on sweet potatoes and yams, I said, well, okay. And when I tried it for the first time a few months ago, I have, I've been recommending it passionately ever since because it was truly amazingly delicious. So thank you for giving me a kick in the pants to actually do it. And I did. All so. your flavors are great except for lavender. <laughs> and it's not your and fault it's, it's not your fault there's just i just don't care for lavender that's just it I, I, chef uh, i i have nothing to argue with that there i don't think i've ever used the lavender on anything um we have uh, out of all 38 flavors uh that we're down to the last seven or eight flavors before we've done all of them over the last three years and uh, lavender is still on there and are probably going to keep it for the very end. <laughs> so it's, it's by far our least popular product. But there yeah. are always a handful There's of people always who a few do people like, that it. like it. You know what I wondered, That's Thomas? Is I, I love to eat purple grapes. I think they're better than green grapes. I think they're sweeter. But in balsamic, it seems like the white balsamic is sweeter than the dark. How is that possible when the grape of the darker grape is sweeter than the lighter grape? Well, technically, uh, on, uh, for our dark and white balsamic, the white balsamic is 30 calories and the, uh, no, sorry, the, yeah, the white balsamic is 30 calories a tablespoon and the dark balsamic is 36 calories a tablespoon. Yeah, so why In is my that? Yeah. I, it, it just feels, no, so many of our white balsamic vinegars, especially the ones that have, you know, fruit flavored, the peach, the pear, strawberry, lavender, raspberry, they just seem sweeter because they're fruit flavored. Um, but are they actually sweeter? No. The the dark balsamics are six calories a tablespoon more. So, but I people say it to me all the time. The why is the fruit flavored one sweeter than the dark? And I say, well, but I find not. it even the plain, I find that even the plain white to me tastes sweeter than the plain dark. Mm-hmm. Well, may seem that way, but it's not. All right. Just All right. that's the way it is. All right. Good, good, good. Okay. Let's get the party started. Um, we're going to start off with um, a, uh, this is a cranberry dressing. Uh, very appropriate for this season. It's uh, from uh, Lissa Maris, who's one of our long timers, long timers out there. So Lissa, thank you very much for your recipe. And, and she says, this is super easy. Blend together all the following ingre ingredients in a high-speed blender. So that's it. The juice of a lemon. And for the first time in years, I actually found a Meyer lemon in our local Safeway grocery store. Almost always they're Eureka lemons, which are best for their oil. Meyer lemons are best for their fruit. So we found a Meyer lemon that was juicy as can be. A tablespoon of our blazing habanero. Three whole stalks of green onions three garlic cloves, one and a half cups of fresh cranberries, or a little bit more if you'd like a thicker dressing. She got hers from Trader Joe's. A smallish thumb-sized chunk of fresh ginger, or more if you like ginger. Uh, seven medjool dates pitted, and she has in parentheses, do remember to keep track of those pits. Make sure there are seven of them. Uh, a tablespoon of miso paste, she said, I used mellow white, uh, a teaspoon of onion powder, a quarter teaspoon of the following spices, allspice, mustard powder, sage, and thyme, and one to one and a half cups of filtered water. And this makes about 24 ounces. 
enough to fill uh, several, a couple of our you know, 12 ounce salad dressing bottles. And we had, this made these two jars here, as well as what Ethel has uh, in the bowl uh, for for that. And we we weren't sure if we should have cooked the cranberries or just by themselves, but didn't say anything about cooking them. So we just popped them into the high-speed blender and zapped them up. Well, Liz is a raw food chef, so I don't think it, it, it meant to, for it to be cooked. There you go. That's why. So we, so that's what we did. And it's a very simple. It's on the tart side, obviously, with all the lemon juice and the cranberries. So if you like a nice uh, tart dressing, that's a good one because of the fresh ingredients that are in it. And, and you can't go wrong with that. So thank you, Lissa. Um, I'm not sure if we sent you your two eight ounce bottles for having your recipe on the broadcast. If we have not, send us an email and tell us what you'd like. All right. So there's our first one. Number two is from the world famous Brenda Patchell. And she's got a pumpkin black bean soup. And there's lots of ingredients with this one. This is in the show notes. Patrick put them all in there for you. And when I saw all the spices, I was a little bit nervous. But then, and I'll uh, tell you about that in just a second here. So a pumpkin black bean soup. Two cans that are 14 and a half ounce of pumpkin puree, of course, uh, sugar-free. Four cups of vegetable broth. One 14 ounce can of light coconut milk, two cans of black beans drained and rinsed, three tablespoons of blaze and habanero balsamic, a tablespoon of the sweet apple pie balsamic, uh, a tablespoon of your sweetener. Now she had honey on here, but of course we use date syrup, uh, a medium onion diced, two large jalapenos seeded and diced. One and a half to two tablespoons of curry powder, a tablespoon of garam masala, one and a half teaspoons of smoked paprika, uh, two teaspoons of dried cilantro, two teaspoons of ground cumin, a teaspoon of garlic powder, a pinch of cayenne pepper, or enough to taste if you like it a little bit hotter, one and of one half to three quarters teaspoon of a, uh, well, she had a sea salt on here, but we didn't put any of that in. Uh, a quarter teaspoon of black pepper or to taste and a small honey nut squash peel seeded in into half inch cubes and two teaspoons of pumpkin spice balsamic. Now, chef, honey nut squash. Have you ever heard of it? I have heard of it, but I haven't tasted it, but I have never met a squash. I didn't like delicata, kabocha, butternut. There's no bad sure. squash. squash. I like squash is second only to potatoes. There you are. And so we couldn't find as much as we looked around for a honey nut squash. We used uh, a uh, uh, what we used the uh, butternut squash in this. Um, so uh, so we preheat the oven to 400 degrees on a parchment lined baking sheet, uh, place the squash cubes and sprinkle them with the pumpkin spice balsamic, stir to coat, pop them in the oven and bake them for 22 to 30 minutes until they're tender and slightly browned. Now she says, in a Dutch oven, add the onions and jalapenos and saute them over medium heat until they're softened. Add the remaining ingredients to the onions, except for the coconut milk and the squash cubes, which you put in at the very end. Simmer on low for about 20 minutes. Stir in the coconut milk and the squash cubes and let simmer briefly just to warm the squash and she notes on here that the soup freezes very nicely. And when we made this last night, we were pleased at how it smelled. But then when we actually tried it, we were really pleasantly surprised. It wasn't too much spice, but it was very flavorful. The beans and the, um, the butternut squash were beautiful compliments to each other. I, I mean, if you found the honey nut squash, fantastic. But a butternut squash worked just fine. And I know that I would have liked a kabocha squash because I'm a huge fan of that as well. So that's our uh, a pumpkin black bean soup. Very appropriate for the holidays. We're taking this up to Ukiah 
to share with the employees tomorrow because we know they're going to like this. So that's a winner. So, okay, that's recipe number two. Uh, to, continue, to continue on with our friendly uh, never-ending story, um, when Ethel finally moved to Ukiah oh, many, many years ago, we were right at that point changing balsamic suppliers. And from that was from our 6% acidity balsamic uh, from the Trade Classique line. And Chef, we had a little bit of the blueberry balsamic at the uh, Harvest Festival this past like weekend. That. which I like that flavor. I didn't know you had and it. And I have to agree. Yep. So we had some uh, of that at that event. Um, the 4% acidity that we do now uh, turned out to be such a dramatically jump uh, up in quality that the second that I tried the flavor or the balsamic, the white and the dark balsamic for the very first time, I knew that we had found our new supplier and that it was going to be fantastic. And we then started uh, taking some of our old recipes. And since today's recipe uh, flavor of the day is blazon habanero, our tray classic flavor, we used to call it blazon hot balsamic. And we every once in a while, we still get somebody who will say, hey, do you still make that blazon hot? You know, so plus the sweet heat, we changed the name from habanero, habanero and serrano peppers, habanero. Uh, people couldn't pronounce it. People couldn't spell it. And so we changed the name to Sweet Heat just to make things much easier. And then we had several other, we knew that many of the fruit flavors that we had were going to be popular, especially the fig and pomegranate. And uh, uh, now that we have our new huckleberry, which our little Miss Brinley is a big fan of, um, she, we put some of the huckleberry on the, on the, on the tofu here in the air fryer today, which she gave us a big thumbs up. So when a five-year-old gives us a thumbs up with tofu and huckleberry, I recommend that your kids try it. And we just had so many new flavors to develop over the years. And I told my staff uh, five and a half years ago that we weren't going to develop any new flavors. We had at least uh, 20 uh, balsamic vinegars without oil. And I said, no more new flavors. And then, Chef, you came into my life, and we now have 38 oil-free flavors. And we're still going to develop more. And uh, the plant-based community has an insatiable appetite for oil-free. And so we're going to keep doing more. Eventually, we're going to have the sun-dried tomato basil. I know it's coming out much later than we wanted to. But it's going to happen early next year. It just has to be bottled with our our new machine. Because if you can imagine pouring things by hand from a pitcher into these little tiny bottles, you know, like this size. If you pour it by hand, you have chunks of sun-dried tomato. When one little sun-dried tomato gets stuck on the very top, the balsamic just flows over the outside of the bottle. And it's such a mess. So we need to use our machine that you'll put the little bottle inside the nozzle and it goes up into it, fills it up to the right amount and never makes a mess. So that's our challenge is to use that uh, new machine for uh, for that flavor. So you're all caught up with the new uh, line of, uh, of our flavors here. And our last one um, is uh, from a young lady named Mandy Burns. And she has a, uh, a, a recipe with the spaghetti squash. And now this is the recipe that was supposed to have the tempeh in it. It goes like this. Um, this, is a, uh, this serves four people. A package of tempeh, uh, one to two tablespoons of blazon habanero balsamic, uh, one to two tablespoons of smoked hickory, a little bit of water, a tablespoon of water, two medium spaghetti squash, um, or substitute any type of pasta for faster meal prep, and a jar of, of course, uh, sodium-free, sugar-free marinara sauce. Directions. Preheat the oven to 400. Cut both squash in half lengthwise and scoop out the seeds and any stringy bits. Set the seeds aside for later. Place the squash cut side down on a baking dish that is covered with a piece of parchment paper or on a silicone baking mat. Bake in the oven for 45 to 75 minutes, depending on the size of the squash halves. 
Test the doneness every 15 minutes starting at 45 minutes by piercing the back of the largest squash with a fork and the fork should slide in very easily when it's ready. While the squash is cooking, dice the tempeh into small cubes. Mix together equal parts of blazed habanero and the smoked hickory in a small dish. You can thin it out with a little bit of water if you want to and toss the tempeh in the balsamic mixture to evenly coat it then air fry the pieces for 20 minutes at 400. Um, the tempeh could also be baked in the oven. The air fryer, though, gives a nice crispiness to it. But be sure to toss the pieces every, uh, you know, after 10 minutes, watch them because the edges can burn. And if you toss them, then they cook evenly. And then you reserve the remaining uh, marinade of the, the two balsamics in the water. Then you clean the squash seeds, discarding any of the stringy bits left over from the spaghetti squash. Once it's clean, toss the seeds in the leftover tempeh marinade and allow the seeds to sit until the squash is out of the oven. So you're just kind of marinating this little seeds. Uh, warm the marinara on the stovetop. Once the squash is done cooking, remove from the oven and reduce the oven temperature to the lowest temperature, 100, 125, 150, anywhere in there. Use a fork to fluff up the spaghetti strands, remove from the skin to plate it. You top it with the marinara sauce and the tempeh cubes. And then for the seeds, spread the seeds on a baking sheet uh, that is covered with a piece of parchment paper or a silicone baking mat and bake at 150 for one to three hours. Shake or stir the seeds every 30 to 45 minutes so they cook evenly and they don't stick together. Check for doneness at an hour and every 30 minutes by trying one and the seeds should be nice and crunchy and you can put those seeds over the top as well and this is the the spaghetti squash with the tempeh or we use the tofu and the marinara set there that dish is killer we thoroughly enjoyed this for our lunch today and i highly recommend it so i'm a big fan of the soup and the spaghetti squash dish for today's um, flavors. And wow. uh, I that think looks, you'll really enjoy them. Looks delicious. What kind of air fryer do you use? That's a good question. It is a Cuisinart. Yep. Cuisinart straight from probably our friends at Costco. And we use that thing every day and absolutely love it. I don't know. The first, when you told us about our air fryers years ago, we, well, not sure. We didn't really use it. And we actually gave it, a, gave the our first one we had, we gave it away as a gift to somebody. And then we realized as we were doing more of these programs that we really needed the air fryer for many of our dishes. And so we went out and bought another one and we've been using it like crazy ever since. So it just took us a little while to learn how to use it. And we love it. And what are you doing for Thanksgiving? What are you making? Well, we're going to have uh, Ethel, myself, uh, Brinley's mom and older sister are coming up to visit. Uh, Ethel's brother, Joey, and my sister, Nancy, we're coming over and everybody's going to bring a little something. So it's going to be interesting. One of uh, 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 an onion dish that my family has been making my entire life uh, is, is kind of a, a, an onion casserole. And that's something that I'll be making. And uh, Ethel is, uh, she's always got, uh, oh, her green beans. Uh, there's a green bean dish that, oh yeah, <laughs> Tanya, she always has that, that traditional green bean uh, little uh, casserole. And then, oh, Ethel's making her yam dish, sweet potatoes with a little bit of the orange balsamic and uh, and almonds and you throw it in the oven and bake it for an hour and a little bit of apples out there that is an outrageously good dish that she's been perfecting over the last uh, 10 years that we take to every every thanksgiving dinner wherever we're going but this is the first year that we're going to be here and we're not traveling somewhere because we normally did a festival on thanksgiving weekend in san jose but that's now canceled so we actually get to be home and there'll be seven of us for Thanksgiving dinner here for the first time in decades. So this is very exciting. We'll have a very happy Thanksgiving. Thank you, Chef. You, you too. I'm sure there'll be lots of photos uh, everywhere of uh, people uh, and the dishes that they've made uh, on 
on the website. That's great. And what are the what is the flavor of the month next month? And tell people how to send in recipes to win two free eight ounce bottles. Yes, indeed. So next month we're doing the our blackberry white balsamic, um, and uh, send us a recipe at orders at californiabalsamic.com. And if we use your recipe, you'll get two complimentary eight ounce bottles of your choice as a, uh, as a thank you gift for having your recipe on our site. And I think adding the three recipes today that we have, I think our website now has near 225 SOS free recipes on it. So that number continues to grow. Great. Well, thanks so much. Always good to see you and happy Thanksgiving to your family. Super, okay. Chef. Bye, Thomas. All right. Thanks, Chef. Bye now. And to you all the way to, I guess he's in Marysville today. We have the man who knows more about spice than anybody I've ever met. And he has a new blend he's going to tell you about. And he's going to make a vegan SOS free tikka masala. Please welcome Nick. Hey, Nick, how are you? I'm doing pretty good, AJ. How are you? I'm good. I'm curious. Why don't you do the Harvest Festival? Yeah, we've we've never done those big festivals. We've done some some farmers markets, uh, but you know we tend to, uh, you know, probably biggest difference between Thomas's business and mine is they they make it uh, from the big festivals. We make it from uh, uh, our retail locations, and uh, and both of us. Uh, you know, pick it up on the side from the uh, from the internet. So, little different business. Okay, but it could be fun. You know, it sounds like fun. I've got. We actually have a friend who's been pushing us to do. There's a there's a giant festival in uh, in Houston called the Nutcracker that where uh, uh, I mean, it, it just it sounds amazing. And uh, she's been telling them about us, and she wants us to go do it. But I. I just don't know if we're going to do that. I mean, like Thomas, he was talking about being 66 and, and and being out on the road. And it's kind of nice to be able to wear your warm sweater and sit in your comfortable store. <laughs> wow. Have you ever been to one of those fancy food shows or that big show, the Expo? I think it's called Expo West in Anaheim. You've ever done any of those? Uh, so we, we, we go to the uh, fancy food show in uh and the, the West Coast one in the in the winter every year, uh, we we uh, you know we don't have a booth, but we go mostly just to keep stay abreast with uh, of uh, what's happening in our industry and what other people are doing. We look for uh, for partners and vendors that way. Nice. And what are you doing for Thanksgiving? Well, it's going to be pretty boring, actually. Um, my my daughter. Uh, uh, has just is just closing on her first house, and they actually get the keys uh, tomorrow. So on uh, on Thanksgiving Day, I'm going to spend the whole day helping her move and and you know small projects to get the uh, get the new place fixed up. So is Thursday moving, and Friday, what? is she moving near us? Well, she she lives in Petaluma, and she's moving about five blocks from where she lives right now. Oh, well, Petaluma is closer to Thomas. Uh, it is. Petaluma is a cool town. I don't know if you spent any time there, but they have they have a real solid uh, foodie community, and uh, you know I've I've watched it grow because I I grew up in uh, down in uh, in Marin County, just south of there. But uh, it's a cool town. I like it. Nice. Hey, one thing uh, I wanted to that uh, I don't think has been mentioned, but we've got uh, we've got an event coming up this weekend, don't we? Me. You small business Saturday. Oh and yeah, small okay. Business Sunday. <laughs> that's right. That's right. You guys will be back on uh, for a little bit on Sunday. That's right. I keep forgetting about that. Twice that's in one. A, that's a big deal, and uh, we're actually we're, we're going to have uh, some exciting offers for our uh, for our whole food plant based friends uh, there. Um, uh, and uh, I think I can I can uh, I can share at least one of them. I can share I can share two things today. The first one is. All of the special offers we're going to be uh, talking about on Sunday, uh, we've already got up on the website and a number of people have already started finding them. Um, the other is that we've decided uh, uh, this year until the end of the year, uh, our, we're going to be, we are, we are uh, lowering the cost of our top seller, uh, uh, Saigon Cinnamon, 20% uh, to $8 a jar. It's a really, really good price. 
and uh, we're really happy to share it with our friends in the uh, in the plant plant based community. But we're looking forward to that. And everything around here is about getting ready for uh, getting ready for the holidays and supporting all of our uh, all of our customers who uh, rely on us for that for happy holidays. Nice. So I heard a couple things from uh, from Thomas that uh, just made me think how similar his business is to mine and, you know, the same kind of issues that we face, like the, uh, uh, you know, letting people know about uh, shipping deadlines. But he mentioned three words that I don't know. I've never heard them put together like that, and I wasn't sure it was a thing. I think he said too many spices <laughs> for his second <laughs> recipe. Is oh. that a thing? Oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> but uh, um, no, we're doing great. And, uh, uh, you know, this is uh, always a very, very busy time of year, which is exciting for us. So things are going great. Nice. So what you going to make? Uh, so <clears throat> I've got it, you know, Tikka masala, right? Tikka masala, uh, many, many culinary uh, historians uh, have said that tikka masala is the most popular curry in the world. We've been in this business 10 years, and I've never made a tikka masala. Uh, there are a number of things, I think, that have held me back. One is, you know, a belief that, you know, tikka masala is one of those things that's kind of on the menu that uh, that they give to uh, that they give to Westerners, um, but it really is a, uh, a a classic dish and and an important dish and a delicious dish. Uh, my the tikka masala blend that I have actually was one that I I worked out with a uh, uh, a very important Indian chef from San Francisco. Uh, he was the executive chef at uh, what at the time was the I think most people would have said was the top Indian restaurant in the city. And uh, we came together at the request of a, uh, of a, of a third party food processor uh, that wanted us to work together on a tikka masala blend. And, and this is, uh, this is the outcome of that. It is a, it is an absolutely outrageously delicious uh, blend that makes restaurant quality uh, uh, tikka masala sauce. And uh, so we, uh, you know, we've had it, uh, you know, commercially for this uh, food processor for a number of years. First time that we're going to be that we decided we're going to release it retail. Um, I don't know how much people know about the flavor in tikka masala, but it's really primarily driven by the flavor of fenugreek. Um, fenugreek uh, uh, in Latin means uh, Greek, uh, uh, Greek hay. Uh, it actually is used as a hay in Europe, uh, but the seeds have a distinctive flavor of maple. In fact, the primary use for fenugreek in today's world is uh, uh, is the main ingredient in in a in uh, uh, maple art uh, flavoring. Um, and uh, so you get the, that you get that mapley flavor from the fenugreek, and then the next big flavor is one of my favorite spices, which is cardamom. And the two of them are, you know, very, very sweet spices. So this makes a very sweet dish. And, uh, you know, beyond that, it's, it's you know, your typical coriander cumin. Uh, but then it has a large quantity of, of paprika and chilies and some black pepper. Uh, and as a dish, it's usually uh, uh, made in a, uh, a tomato-based sauce. Um, uh, it, it's exquisitely, uh, 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 you know, it's got some, You've got great, great sweet tones. It's got some great umami tones. Very, very satisfying. And it is so simple to make. I've been thinking, you know, that we all remember the old hamburger helper, and I haven't come up with a good a good uh, word for the vegetable vegetarian community, but this is almost like that. Uh, uh, so I'm going to walk you through the, uh, uh, the recipe. Um, you'll find uh, the complete recipe is up on our website, on the blog site, if you go into the... the the main page on the recipe and just scroll down till you see the same background that you're looking at here. Uh, in, in the word blog, you can click in and you'll find find this recipe. But uh, it begins with a mirepoix. I've done a couple of things in advance just to kind of speed this up. I, I've got the rice has been made. 
Uh, and I went ahead and, and did the saute for the, the mirepoix. It's a you know, very traditional mirepoix kind of, kind of based sauce. Um, so what I've got in this bowl here, I'll bring it up to the camera. I mean, that is just uh, uh, minced onion, uh, minced garlic, uh, uh, minced ginger, and some carrot. And, uh, you know, quantities, it's, you know, one large onion. Uh, it's got a lot of garlic. I, I put seven, eight cloves in it. I haven't done this yet, but I think it would be terrific to substitute out just a whole head of garlic that's been up and roasted and then just squeeze it in because, you know, that's kind of real consistent with the flavor that you're going for in a, in a tikka masala. I'm going to turn the, uh, the stove top on just to heat this, uh, heat this up and we can do the, uh, do the, you know, finish up the sauce here. Um, since we released this, uh, about 10 days ago, um, it's been very popular at our house, and I, uh, I've had many times uh, requested to uh, to make more of it, more of it. I think in the last 10 days, I've made this dish about four times. I'm about done with it, <laughs> but it really is uh, uh, quite delicious, quite exciting. comes together in about a half an hour, um, uh, which is, I think, very attractive, and it's, it, you know, it's a, it's a nice warm satisfying dish for uh for these cold times um i'm just trying to get, i've got this uh on a high heat because i'm really just trying to heat this up because the next step after the mirepoix is i'm going to add the spices and uh, uh we want the spices to kind of toast a little bit i want them want the spices in this and i want to keep them going until we start getting some serious aromatics off of it and then we'll put the liquids in and that's it it's basically done um, I'm also, uh, something that, uh, is not in the recipe, but, uh, I've been, I did it last time, uh, and it, uh, it really kind of helped the flavor quite a bit. I'm going to be adding a little bit of our bacon seasoning and, you know, you might say, why are you doing that? There's no bacon in tikka masala. And you'd be right if you said that, but, you know, tikka masala is usually made with, with, uh, uh, roasted chicken. And with the roasted chicken, you get these, these, uh, umami flavors and, and, you know, kind of a smoky sense to it. That's pretty much all the flavors that we put in the bacon. So it, it, it seemed appropriate and it, and it really helped quite a bit. So, uh, I can see that, uh, that the, uh, where the onion sweated is starting to dry up. So I'm going to get the, uh, get the, um, spices in the two tablespoons of the tikka masala. masala. And I said, just a little bit. I'm just going to put a half a teaspoon of the bacon seasoning in. And actually, this is uh, already tasting. I can, I can smell the uh, smell the, the spices releasing the aromatic. Very close already to the point where I'm going to going to dump some other flavors in here. That's it. <clears throat> okay. Um, For this, I'm going to be using uh, uh, canned vegetables. Obviously, it's kind of hard to find some good, uh, uh, good ripe tomatoes right now. This is a can of uh, of fresh tomatoes. It's you know the large 28 uh, ounce can, uh, uh, no salt added. Let's get that in there so that we don't start burning our spices. Hey uh, Nick, you know what? You there? Yeah. Oh, I, I, you know, mirepoix, I've seen it, you know, like in stores in the refrigerated section, you know, with it all mm -hmm. cut up, the carrot, the onion and celery. And I've bought it several times at Trader Joe's like to make stuffings. But today's the first time at the store I actually saw frozen mirepoix. Oh, what so, a great, what a time saver, huh? Yeah, I couldn't believe it. It was, you know, Rayleigh's brand, but I thought, hey, this is kind of cool. You know, Rayleigh's got some good stuff, but you know, uh, in French, mirepoix means to uh, uh, to make to make thick. It's uh, you know to make a sauce. It's the it's the basic thing that uh, you add your flavors to that uh, thickens it. That's really what it what it's intended for. Um, all right, so I'm, I put some uh, uh, tomato paste in. I think the recipe says use uh, three tablespoons. I'm not going to really measure. I'm going to take just about half the can. There you go. You know, there are people that measure and there are people that don't measure. 
when I cook, I really am not a measuring kind of a guy. I kind of I like to like to feel it and smell it and taste it as it develops. Now the other thing, if you uh, if you you know looking for restaurant quality on the tikka, the tikka sauce in a restaurant they'll uh, uh, they'll liquefy it and make it really really uh, you know kind of thin and consistent. I love you know these chunks. It looks almost like a marinara sauce. I just love having the chunks in it, and it makes it it makes it to me so much more fulfilling and taste thin and taste delicious. Okay, so we got that. Blah blah. blah. I've already uh, 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 rinsed and drained the chickpeas. It's gonna be one of the last things that I put in. Actually, I think I'll just dump them in right now. Chickpeas. They're basically already ready. We just need to get them uh, warmed up a little bit in the sauce. And I'm just, just by eye, looks like this sauce is a little bit thicker than I want it. So I'm going to just put a little bit of water in to thin it out. Um, this would be a, a great time to use uh, some bada bing bouillon if you want to add some more depth. But uh, I'm pretty crazy about the flavor of this as it is, which is why I'm going with the water. That's looking just about right. And then... So, uh, this next step is an option for you if uh, you know if you are uh, you know in this on the weight weight loss side, you may not want to add coconut milk. This is just a can of coconut milk, and it's uh, it is there is nothing wrong with this sauce without the coconut milk. The coconut milk just makes it a little bit richer and a little bit sweeter. Uh, but I'm gonna I'm gonna bring this up so you can see. It is a gorgeous, gorgeous sauce. And you know, I would take that just the way it is. Uh, you know, you can you can put it in Tupperware and you can freeze it uh, and pull it out anytime that you want. But the whole idea behind the uh, um, <clears throat> behind the coconut milk, like I said, it just kind of it kind of thickens it, makes it richer, richer, and makes it sweeter. So I'm gonna go ahead and just put this in. Yeah. The recipe, I think, says a cup of uh, of the uh, coconut milk, but I found that the, the, the can is only about a cup and a quarter. So I'm just going to put the whole cup in, which is what I've been doing, and it uh, seems to work just fine. And then the last thing I'm going to put in are some frozen peas. What are you making for Thanksgiving? Well, I'm going to be working all day with my daughter, so we're not cooking. Uh, I'm actually the day after Thanksgiving. I'm going to be making this for everybody that's uh, that's working at her house. Uh, but on Thanksgiving Day itself, uh, my daughter's future mother-in-law is uh, is going to bring a uh, going to bring bring dinner for everybody. Okay. I'm just going to let that sit in heat for just a minute, and I'm going to go ahead and plate this because we're we're done. It's really that easy. Oh, I'm going to put right here. Yeah, we uh, we were going to do our uh, our vegan paella um for thanksgiving but uh i'm just not going to have the time to do that so i've got to everybody's in the chat talking about how much they love your bacon seasoning it's yeah it's really it's it's one of those things that's really changed how i uh how i cook as you can see i'm putting it right in this dish it's you know it's so much more than just a dip, just a bacon flavor because, like I said, it gives you those umamis kind of kind of meaty flavors plus some smoky flavor. But there we go. There's our tikka masala, and uh, you'll taste it. It is absolutely restaurant quality, uh, 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 delicious, um, and nice on a on a uh, on a cold rainy night. Well, that looks oh. good. Thanks. Oh wait. Hold on. There. Even prettier. Just a little bit of cilantro on the top. Well, now you've got dinner for tonight. Yeah. Now, I, 
for for you, AJ, I do have black pepper in this. I don't think that you can have it. Um, no, I can't. It's funny. It's in my medical chart, but apparently black pepper has like some fancy name like fructus al something or other, or I don't know, because they were asking me what this allergy was. And I'm like, I didn't know. And I looked it up. So I guess there's like a, a fancy name for black pepper. Um, uh, Latin name is, uh, is, Ni is Nigrum. Um, or Piper is the family. Um, but uh, I don't know. I mean, it could be a fancy name for the kind of the family. And I don't, I don't know. That was new to me. Well, I think I, I know I know what you're doing for Thanksgiving. Oh, my God. There's going to be like 35 people here. You know, so sorry that not uh, not to be able to make that. That was uh, that was so much fun last year, and I, I still know. tell people we had such a but, good dinner. I know the millet loaf, but I, I'm, I'm pulling out all the stops. As a matter of fact, at four o'clock, I'll be doing a live cooking demonstration of Thanksgiving recipes at Plant Powered Metro, and the link is right in the chat right now. If anybody wants to watch, cool. I don't know that that mill you said at the millet loaf last year it went went so fast and it was so tasty. I'm trying to make like four times as much as last year, so got <laughs> a, a bunch of the employees at True North coming and uh, they're big eaters. So fantastic! That was, uh, it was it was good. It was good food and uh, and good company. Yep, and happy holidays! And I'll see you again right here on Chef AJ Live on Sunday morning for small Can't wait. Sunday. All right, well, take care, Nick. All right. It's good to see you. Okay. Thanks, everyone, for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. If you come back in about an hour, there's a link to Plant Powered Metro. I'll be making some Thanksgiving recipes. It's absolutely free to watch. And mm -hmm. tomorrow at 9 a.m., we have Dr. Lori Marvis talking to you about how to prevent and treat